All right. You ever had those times when you wanted a specific knife, but you just couldn't afford it because it was just way too much money? And then you do a little bit of looking around, right? You're, you're, you're looking, you're looking, and, and then you come across something and you go, that can't be the same knife. No, it's not. It's a copy. But you go ahead and you're like, you know what? That looks pretty convincing. I'm going to try that out. That's what happened to one of my friends when he was trying to look for a uh, Microtech. Is it Microtech? I think it's a Microtech. Either way, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure this one out. Let me know in the comment section down below what this knife looks like to you. I think it's a Halo. I think it's what it's called. And yeah, I was pretty... Uh, pretty strung up on it myself when I saw it, and I was like, wow, I think I might want one myself. Let's talk blades, everybody. That's what we're into today. I have for you guys something from a company that I am not too familiar with. Covert Ops. Now, what's Covert Ops? It's a knife company. <laughs> if you hadn't already figured that out, I can't stress enough how awesome I think this knife is. Uh, because I was interested in a knife years and years ago, I believe it was the Halo 5? Or was the Halo Microtech? Was it Microtech? I want to say it was Microtech. Ah, either way, I'm not going to waste your time trying to sit here and try to figure out, try to remember going back in my memory. But here is the um, model information right here the za05 tbk and then of course limited lifetime warranty covert ops usa and then you got the warning everybody loves that you know you get to be exposed to certain elements that can give you cancer all right so let's open up the damn box already so here it is And then you get this Covert Ops Limited Lifetime Warranty card if you so choose to use it. If you can, that is. But of course, you have 30 days to do the registration in order to get the coverage on this particular piece. But that's whatever. Uh, now, the stuff that it comes with. It comes with a Kydex sheath, and it does work pretty well. It works, you know, pretty decently. You got your closure there that seems pretty darn sturdy and this is good quality i say in my opinion and then of course you get a tool with it which i think is really cool every covert ops that i i have seen this person have comes with a free little mini tool he actually gave me one of these because he had so many he's a collector of covert ops and I can see why, because uh, if you wanted a very expensive knife but couldn't afford it, these guys sometimes have it just copied. <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, it's their own twist on it, so it's not exactly a copy, but it's still just as darn freaking cool as the real thing. And then, of course, that's all that comes inside the box. We could throw that to the side. You get this thing in the bubble wrap sheath. Not a sheath, sorry. Sleeve, that's the word. Now, what does this knife look like, you guys? Doesn't it kind of tickle your funny bone just a little bit when it comes to curiosity of what this knife resembles? Now, I want to say it's a halo, because that's what it looks like to me. It looks like a halo, and I want to say that it's from Microtech. God, if I'm wrong, I, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to feel really dumb about it, but that's okay. That's what I got you guys for. Please let me know in the comment section down below whether I got that company right. Um, Halo? It's a, it looks like a Halo knife. But anyways, you got the two locking mechanisms right here. This is a single action switchblade with safeties. So you have the two safeties down here that ensure that this uh, charge bar stays in place. And then, of course, you've got a safety up here with the button, so that way you cannot deploy this. I can press on it all I want, it's not going to deploy. But if I push this part down, you see that? That little click. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But basically, you take your your, th your fingernail, you push that down, and then you you push this out of the way, and then down. And the knife deploys. What does that look like to you guys? Halo? 
Either way, super cool stuff. I enjoy this knife very much, but I'm sad because it is not mine. But I do want one now. <laughs> Just featuring it on my channel, and I'm having too much fun. Um, so you got a fuller that runs along the spine of the blade, uh, otherwise known as a blood groove. And then uh, you got this little notch right here, which is kind of attractive uh, aesthetically wise, but it's actually a notch for the locking mechanism or the, uh, I'm sorry, the button mechanism right here, uh, which also performs as a locking mechanism to keep the blade from moving. And then of course you have D2 steel. It says so right there on the blade, D2 steel. All right. And then in order to get this knife to, uh, retract, cause this is locked in place. I cannot move this blade. It's very solid. There's no blade play at all. It's very good. You press this down. You got to push this little actuator thing, you know, that little safety down. And then push that button down in order to unlock it. Now, when you do that, you unlock the blade, but you have to charge the blade. So you press these in and you pull that charge bar out. All right. And when you do so, let go of the button right there. Because <laughs> I forgot to do that. Let go of the button, it goes back and it locks the blade in place so it is ready for another fire. And then you push this back in place and it locks ever so confidently with that nice little snap. And it's ready for another. This is a big knife, you guys. This is a very big knife. So we're going to go ahead and get into the specs of this thing. So that way you guys know exactly what we're dealing with here. All right. Comes in at a 5.03 ounces. So, is it heavy? Well, you're not going to drop this in the pocket because it doesn't have a pocket clip. You're going to have to use this. So, with this sheath, I'm going to go ahead and re-evaluate how much this thing weighs altogether. You're going to have it on your belt, right? 7.51? Eh, I'll give it that. 7.51 ounces for the whole lot. This thing, this thing that is attached to this thing, and this thing that is the main thing of this whole entire thing. So, really cool stuff. And like I said, you get this little Torx uh, screwdriver that goes with it. And yes, it does. I've actually tested it out. It does fit all the screws that are on this bad boy. And it just works so nicely. It really does. Covert Ops. Price tag on this thing, if you are that much interested in it, is literally 100 bucks. And I'm pretty sure the place that my uh, special friend that does collect these knives, uh, I think he gets it from a what's that place called Weapons Universe. I think it's I think that's what he where he shops. I go I shop at Blade HQ. They don't sell anything like this, but Weapons Universe I think is what the um, the website is called. Is it Weapons Universe or Weapons Galaxy? Something like that. I think it's Weapons Universe. Don't quote me on it. You can go ahead and look it up yourself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and... God, that is so cool. I'm going to go ahead and um, measure the blade so you guys have a good idea of how big this monstrosity is. You're looking at four and a half inches of awesome with an overall ten and a half inches and the handle length is a six and one-fourth. A little bit short, a little bit over a six and one eighths handle, but you don't have to worry about that because it's not going to go in your pocket. Um, you could drop this in your pocket, but it's just going to, you know, it's going to do its thing. It's going <laughs> to go all over the place because there's no pocket clip, you know. So here's the sheath. You put it in the darn sheath and it stays pretty well. It is not coming out. No matter how much I shake it, it's not coming out. So it stays in there. Uh, it's a friction kind of thing, but once you hear that snap, it is in place, and you could uh, put this on your belt or whatever you want to do with it. Cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Um, now, if you're interested in how big things are, let's go ahead and get into that, shan't we? You're looking at a 3.6 on the blade. Wow, what did I just do? Okay, I thought I cut something. I was like, ooh. And you're looking at a 12.0 on the handle. Oh, yeah, a bit of a chunkster, but it's not as bad as you think. It's really not. Um...
Now, what's really cool about this is that it takes up after a knife that is five times the price. Um, for a hundred bucks, this is awesome. This is really awesome. You can have a halo that is, well, as close to a halo as you can get to without spilling all your money on it. Because if I remember correctly, the halo was not a very cheap knife. That thing is excruciatingly expensive. The only thing that I have to say that's kind of bad about this knife that I already can tell you that I don't like, uh, for one, there's no grip. This thing has jimping here, 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 and, you know, here and here. But when you're holding this damn thing, you don't, other than the shape of the handle, which is pretty awesome, by the way, you don't have much grip. So if you have sweaty hands, or maybe you have blood-covered hands because you're some weird murderer, this is not going to provide you with any grip. And about that whole murderer thing, please no. <laughs> please, please no. I'm just trying to be stupid. But this is not the ideal knife um, combat-wise if you're trying to protect yourself or trying to protect your family. Um, this could do it, but... I would I would want something with like G10 or, you know, some sort of inlay, something in there, something that can give me some sort of grip other than, you know, but I guess all the grip that counts is where your fingers are, and that does provide some grip, but if my hands are sweaty or they're covered in grease or something, getting to this thing, I mean, yeah, there's grip there, there's a lot of grip there, and the jimping, but I would much rather prefer some gripped scale inlays of some sort down here. Of course, that would alter the price. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this thing is cool. This is a single action switchblade, and it's huge. It's a big knife. It's a very big knife. Cool factor? Uh, yeah. I, I really do like this knife. I really do. The price point on this thing being 100 bucks, you get all of that for 100 bucks, and this thing is great quality. You know, you got the, I'm pretty sure this is all, this is aluminum, that's aluminum. Uh, the button, I'm pretty sure is some sort of aluminum or some sort of alloy of some kind, but the steel, the D2 steel on there is actually really cool. So, I mean, you get a cool knife out of it for a hundred bucks. This is great. Um, would I want the real Halo? Yes, but that would cost me half of my paycheck if I could get my hands on one. Uh, and then, of course, me being who I am and where I'm at, I wouldn't be able to legally carry it. So it would be a humongous waste of money. But for the collector, this could be something that you could consider having in your collection. I mean, it, it's, it's a knife that's modeled after a more expensive piece without it breaking the bank, at least too much anyway. So that'd be really cool. I really enjoy this. I really don't know what to call this thing <laughs> other than the Halo wannabe. I don't know. Or it could just be just the Covert Ops, whatever the heck that is. I don't know. But it's great. Covert Ops, they make some really, really awesome stuff. My buddy has a ton of very interesting knives. Um, I think he has one or two others from Covert Ops that actually has this kind of you know array of copying a different knife and then making it their own and i think that's really really cool i really do i, I really dig that so practicality on this do i would i carry this uh no <laughs> i tell you that right now no i do carry a i always wear a belt but I don't see myself carrying something that's going to be sticking into my rib all the damn time because of this humongous handle sticking out but could it be ideal? Well, sure. Um, to an extent. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more into folding knives that are just simple with the thumb stud or the flipper or whatever. Anyways, this is a great knife for what it is and for the price point. Something that you would ever consider collecting, this would be great. And the fact that it comes with something that works, 